Hey dealer, let me get in the game. Hey dealer, boom, dice hits you in the hands. Don't be that guy. Today's episode, we're gonna discuss table etiquette. This is for the beginners, the intermediate, and even for the advanced, because the advanced people still make mistakes. I was on a table last week and I seen three or four mistakes and I just shook my head at, wondering what the heck is going on. The players look like veteran players and yet they're making rookie mistakes. So, very important, we're gonna cover some topics here on table etiquette. By the way, my name is Vegas Dice Controller. Thank you for tuning in to my channel. I appreciate it. Uh, like and subscribe. If you get something out of this, hopefully uh, give a thumbs up. We can continue making solid videos for you guys. But got my little cheat sheets here to, so I don't, don't forget anything. Um, you know, craps is the most, is the loudest and most crowded and popular and intimidating game in the casino. Um, no matter where you are in the casino, you always know where the craps tables are by the cheering. You can close your eyes and just listen and you know exactly where to go for the craps tables. With that said, there's some table etiquette that needs to be presented when playing on a craps table. Um, table entry, you know, is probably one of the most important things. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna discuss something that's kind of off topic to table etiquette, but I wanna set you guys in the right motion. That when you're in a table and you're trying to find a table to play at, don't just settle for any table. Walk around, get a feel for the table. Use your internal energy, your, your intuitive speaking to you on what table you should come to. Physically look at the racks and see if there is chips in the rack, if there's large amounts of chips, not monetary value, but quantity. If you have a rack, these racks are full of $5 chips, you might be at a $5 table. That's a sign that the table is passing. That's a sign that box numbers are being hit that rolls are long, people are making money, probably the proposition bets are hitting, but their racks are full, multicolored in the chips. Those are, that is a table you wanna to try to get on. Unfortunately, right now, because of COVID, what's going on is it's, it's hard to get a spot on the table and people are just settling and they're walking into a bad situation and they're losing. So with that said, you walk up to the table, some rules of thumb are immediately do two things. Besides look for the chips in the rack, let's say I was to walk up to this table and, and there's a spot open at stick left two. The first thing I need to look for is who is the shooter. Sometimes I'll ask the dealer, who's shooting? And he'll say, oh, the guy to your right. Well, I don't want to buy in. I don't want to buy in right here if this person is shooting the dice. Now the dice might be down there, the points on the five. I have no idea if this guy to the right of me it's, it's the only spot at the table, so I come in. Um, if I was to do something like this, I probably would wait till he was done shooting, and I would stand thin, I would turn to the side, I'd give him room, give him room to shoot, but it's, it's typically, it's a bad idea to buy in next to the shooter. You're definitely getting there next to the shooter and waiting it out is one thing, but coming in and throwing your money down next to the shooter and crowning him, and everybody's pushing over, he could be in a nice rhythm to the game and you're breaking that rhythm now. Maybe he wanted that little, that little extra room for his left arm or something and now you've impeded that, that distance. So be coherent to what's going on on the table, who the, who the shooter, and look for that puck. If that puck is on a number, you do not want to be throwing money down in the com to buy in. You want to wait for the shooter to make his point or wait for the seven out. Okay? Um, Um, so buying at the correct time. So we're, we're just, we're discussing this now. Let's say the shooter was to make the point and the puck was, you see the dealer paying off the bets. And obviously if, if, uh, there's box numbers up here and they're full, most likely the shooter made the point. Um, if he starts wiping down all these bets and cleaning up the table, it most likely it's a seven out. That would be a good time to buy in on the come out roll. That would be a good time to buy in, throw your money into the, it, into the rack. One of the things you do not want to do is slow the game down. You don't want to come in here with five hundred dollars in twenties to where the box, the pit, the, the dealer picks it up, gives it to the box man, and he's got to lay out and he's got to lay out all these one dollar bills like this, 
Okay, there's four, five, you know, four, whatever, five, etc. On all these 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Come in, if you're gonna buy them for $300, don't, don't come in with, you know, 15, $20 bills. You know, run them through the, run them through the, um, if, if, if you had to go to the ATM or what have you, you, you whatever the case is, run them, run them into a slot machine, cash out, take the ticket, take it to the cage and get, and get $100 bills, okay? Come on the table, the puck's off, you throw $300 out there, the dealer is gonna come give you, most likely he's gonna give you um, eight green chips, he's gonna give you 100 in, in um, red, some places will give you a 90 in red and 10 in white, just like that, okay? Put your chips in the rack. We're gonna stick them right here. I think the camera can see it. Okay, the dealer takes the money. They put it, they put it in, the, in the deal and they drop it in the box, okay? One of the things I like to do is keep my chips organized. I don't like intermixing the colors. I like to stack things. Um, if I have room, I can go something like this and I, I would just set them up. It takes three seconds and I know right now that I have, that I have two stacks of a hundred and I got, you know, maybe I can go something like this, 75, I can keep the ones. I'm not too concerned about the ones. One of the things you want to do if you're playing next to people and it's a tight table, and if you were to put your chips like this, you gotta remember that when the dice are going this direction, your eyes, your focus is looking down this way. A real thief realizes this, and they're pros at this, and they come by, and they will take, and they'll just pull up, pull up a chip off the end, just like that. They'll take the end chip right out. I've had it stolen, stolen from my rack before it went, from the guy right next to me, and you know, I'm talking to my buddy to my left and I'm shooting from straight out, talking to the guy to my left and the guy to my right was stealing the chips according to the pit boss who confirmed it later. So one of the things I do, this happened in the Golden Nugget as well, I had um, three $500 chips stolen off the rack. Rule number one, keep your high chips away from, keep them furthest from the thieves, okay? So you, you're not gonna have your small chips here and your big chips here, it's the other way around. Your big chips are here. If you have any black chips, you know, I'm just gonna, for the sake of argument here, I'm just gonna stick some black chips in here. Gonna go something like this. You do not want to take chips and stick them here like this. I re what happened with me was I reached into the cum to get a cum, a cum winner, and when I did that, the guy, the guy real thing, when I leaned over, he took the, he took the chips just like that. That's simple, grab a stack of them. $500 gone, okay? I reached over, I came back, and my black chips were gone, just like that. So, keep the black chips in the front of the rack like this. One of the things I do is I take a white chip and I put it next to the black chip so they cannot get that second chip out without, dip, without, without it being difficult, okay? That's one thing I do. The other thing I do sometimes is I will take the colors and I will turn them, and I will put three, four, five, and maybe I'll toss another white one in there. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. I toss another white one in there. This does a couple things. This helps the pit boss count your rack and put it in the machine when he's rating you. He can look over and go, okay, five, 1,000, 1,200, 1,300, about 1,300 roughly, okay? Real simple. But this is mainly, so I can see if chips are disappearing from my rack. When I don't do something like this, how do you know how many black chips you have unless you're keeping track? I, I know right now I have a thousand, okay? With that said, let's go ahead and get these blacks out of the game. And let's continue with table etiquette. So that's some things I do right there. Now, <clears throat> um, so we talked about buying, we talked about table placement in the rack. Um, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about knowing what bets on the table are self-service bets and what table, what bets are dealer-only bets. I've been at that table before where I've seen a guy take 
$15 and he'll reach over and go, give me a $15 nine and put it like that, right on the nine. <clears throat> you know, the dealer's gotta tell him, sir, put the money in the cum, I'll take care of it. That's, you can't, you can't get in there, you can't do that bet. So you control the cum and don't cum are self-service bets. The field is a self-service bet. The, pa the don't pass or the pass line are self-service bets. The odds behind the pass line are self-service bets. We talked about don't pass. The don't come is a self-service bet, but the odds are not. So you put the self, you put this in the don't come. The next roll, the point say is a six. The next roll of the dice is a four. The dealer's gonna put this bet. Of course, I'm on the wrong side of the table. He's gonna stack them on top of each other. And I'm just gonna go over here real quick. I'm not sure if the camera can even see this part, but you know, let's just say it's a 10 for the sake of argument to where the camera can see it. He's gonna put the bet down here for that position on the table for the 10. And if you're gonna lay odds, you can either toss the odds here and say lay odds on the 10, or you can put them in the don't come and say lay odds on the 10. When I'm over here near the near this corner, and I know I'm playing dark side, I will try to be in this corner where I can make my don't pass and don't give my don't come bets. He'll just take the bet, he'll come in here and he'll lay odds on the 10 like that. Okay, this, so, so the, the, the flat portion is self-service, but the odds are not on the don't side. However, on the don't pass, yes, the odds are, the odds here, so the points are four, you would stack it up. You don't have to know how to stack it, the dealer will help you. If you're making an overlay bet, say you're making a $60 lay bet on something like this, and you put it on this side, he's gonna move it to the correct side closest to him. He's gonna move it like that and separate the chip. You don't have to worry about that. He'll, fi he'll, he'll fix it. If you pay attention, then you can fix it from that point moving forward. Um, okay, let's see what that is. Let's move on to the next thing. Take this back down. Um, see any, anything in the center of the table, craps, 11, hard waves, horn bets, those are all bets that you just toss the dealer, you toss him $4 and say all the hard waves. He'll take them and set up all the hard waves, okay? Horn bet, dealer hard way, two way hard way, etc. We'll get into that dealer bets here in, in a few. Um, We'll have another video that I'm gonna show all the odds on the game. I'm gonna show you what the house edge is and what the player's edge is on every bet of the table. Four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, come, field, pass line, don't pass, odds, pass line with odds, pass line with no odds, any seven, crap 11, horn bets, high, low, yo, ace, deuce, etc. field, come, Hard ways, proposition bets, the all tall, small, the fire bets. We're going to go over all that stuff and show you what the house edge is. What is a profitable bet for you? What is a the bet you should stay away from? You know, and that's going to be on another video. So stay tuned for that. Let's move forward here. Um, we talked about the uh, self service bets. Um, shooting the dice. You have the option to shoot the dice or to say pass when it's your turn. If it's your turn to shoot, you either have to have a pass line bet, a minimum, and you, if you're not sure what the table minimum is, in each corner near the dealer there's a plaque and it's going to say what the table minimum is and the table maximum is. It could say five dollars to five thousand. Five to five dollars to a thousand. It'll tell you what the odds are for your Come bets odds and your pass line odds, it'll say three, four, five, or double, or 10 times, 20 times, 100 times odds, double odds, etc. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Need some water. <clears throat> um, so, shooting the dice, you have to, you have to know, and, and your, spot, your spot is typically in, in front of you, but you can, you know, I know when CDC likes to shoot, she gets her pass line and moves it way over here. She wants, she wants that the, 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 the chips completely out of her way. Okay. Everybody's got their own little mojo. They all have everything that, that they do. Um, 
We'll get into working with the shooters here in a minute. In a minute. Um, let's see. So concerning food or drink on the table, you can't have a hamburger at the table and be eating it with mustard dripping all over the place, and you got ketchup running down your shirt, and you, know, you smell like onions and garlic. That's not going to fly, you know. Drinks only, and the drinks are to be underneath the rail on the drink rail. I can't tell you how many times last week the guy's got the beer over, he's talking, he's half drunk, he's got the beer like this, and he's yelling at the guy and tossing, and we're all looking like, don't drop that beer, dude. You're gonna kill this game right now. This guy's on a good roll. You know, and the dealer's got to tell him, sir, put the drink, get the drink off the table. Drinks, put the drink in the drink rail. Um, a lot of a lot of guys like to chart when they when they play, and I'm a person who charts. Some casinos, um, they won't, they won't let you. Some guys I know have friends that they have their books out and they'll have it just like this. And you know, they'll write in it and keep the book. There's a couple of casinos out there that don't want anything on the table. So you know, most, of it, most of us just hold it in our hand like this. And this is a real thick book, I have a clipboard, but these are sheets that I made uh, years ago. Um, anyway, uh, you know, in theory that the chip rail is called a chip rail for reasons, for chips, okay? All right. Uh, be courteous to others, give them room to shoot. Like I said, when a guy's, be careful about, about, about buying in. If a person is here shooting from sit left one and I'm next to them, now obviously with COVID there's more room, but back before COVID, they would pack seven people in on one side, you know, it would be like sardines in like this. If this guy's getting ready to shoot, turn sideways. Turn sideways and face like this. So this guy has the maximum amount of room. Step back a little bit. Step back, give him some room. You know, let, let him get in here because he might, you know, have to get up and get over the table and you throw his par shot. He's trying, he's trying to get a good feel and get a good, maybe he likes to be at stick one and a half, not stick one. So give him some room, okay? Um, when you're, I'm not sure if the, again, I don't know if the, if the camera can show this. I don't think it can. But let's pretend like this edge of the table, because I know the camera can see this, is the table end. Okay? And a guy's shooting from the other side, and he's shooting towards me. And he's, he's trying to hit a certain section over here. He's got about a 12 to 18 inch area. And you're going to see people with their pass line bets like this. They got their five, they got it like this. And then this guy over here. Couple inches down from him, this guy's pass line. The other guy's got a freaking feel like that right in the way. Be, be alert, be cognizant to what's going on on the table. Watch the guys come out and roll. And be a person, if you're down at the end, if you're down at the end, you should be blocking for the guy straight across from him. You should be blocking this whole section out. And when I say blocking, I mean take that bet and move it to the far right and the far left and keep this area, this 18 inch area open for the shooter, okay, as much as possible. I've taken, I've seen, we've, we've done like this. We've pushed the bets all the way down like this. We have three people here just like this. Not sure if the camera can see this. I think it can. And then we kept this big area for the shooter. I've been on some of the longest rolls when we've worked as a team, okay? You guys gotta work together. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid to open your mouth. You know, I've been, I've been working, I've been with players before where they say, hey, Shearer, can you move your dice to the left? Can you move your pass line, please? And sometimes I'll say, can you put it on the E on pass line? Because sometimes they'll move it like, it'll be here, it'll be here, and they'll move it like an inch. Really? Like he thinks it has to be in front of him. He has no clue that that, that pass line can be all the way over here, six players away from him. There's nothing in the rules that says a pass line has to be right in front of you. Like I said, we've had it before where they were all on one corner. All six people were all in one section, okay? So we wanna make it, we wanna give the shooter as much room as possible to shoot. We wanna get, put him in his comfort zone that he feels good about throwing the dice down here, missing the field bets. You know, sometimes you have a guy making a five dollar field, you go, that guy's almost hitting your, your, your chips with each roll of the dice. I'll tell him, can you push your field bet up? And I'll tell him, take your field, it doesn't, because you're right here at stick left two, your field bet does not have to be in front of you. It can be way over here, okay? It can be on the 12 on page triple. You know, it doesn't matter. The guy next to you knows it's your bet. You keep this whole area clean. Another good one is the come bet. 
The guy sitting right here in the end, he's got a combat right here. He's got a $10 combat. He's got his pass line bet. You, got, you finally got to convince him to move his pass line bet way over here like this. And now he's got a combat right here and the guy's got to fight that. Sometimes I'll tell the, the guy, I'll say, can you push your combat up to the letter C on come? And I make him pull it all the way up to here to C. And it gives me this whole area here to shoot. Okay, so those are some things you want to work with on the table. Work as a team. You'll be amazed at the different results you get. The dealers, when they're good dealers, they understand what, what we're trying to do. They'll take their stick sometimes and they will actually move the pass line over. They know what we're doing, what we're trying to achieve. Especially if you're making bets for them and they want to, they're, all, they're into the hand with you. They want to get toked. So they're going to make those moves with you, okay? All right, on, on to the next one. Uh, keep your arms out, your hands, arms, and out of the, of, the, of the game. When those dice are out and they're in the center of the table, you can be making your bets, okay? And we'll speak to that in a minute. But when those dice are in the center, that's when you make your bets. No late bets. Okay, we've all made late bets. I've done it. I try to stand in a position where I'm tipping the dealers, and if I have to get a bet in that I forgot, sometimes I will lay it down real close to the rail, and I'll say, heart ache dealer. And, I'll, and I'll, I, you better make sure you're doing a two-way heart ache, by the way. You put them on, the, and then he'll move, he'll let the, he'll leave, he'll pick it up in his hand, he'll let the dice go, and then he'll move it to the heart ache, okay? Just like that. I can't tell you how many times I actually hit, hit the, the next roll on what I was trying to bet. And I, and I bet it late, but I bet it, I'm not doing it in a way that to disrupt the shooter. I keep quiet, I whisper to the dealer. Because I've been toking him the whole time, he makes the bet for me. More times than not, if you're not tipping, they're gonna say, no bet, dice are in the center. Bet when the dice are in the center, they're gonna tell you. So if you have to make a late bet, be on the down low about it and slip the dealer off to the side, and make sure you say two way and get him in on whatever bet you're doing, okay? All right, moving forward. Keep your hands out of the play. Nothing worse than happened last week. Knucklehead is putting his field bet in when we're throwing the dice, hits him in the hand, guess what? Guess what the roll was, seven out. We get wiped out all because the guy's not paying attention on the table. So if you're down there on the other table and you see a guy starting to reach, hey, the dice are out. Or you even say, it's, some, it's nice to see, hear the dealer say, okay, dice out, here we go, hands high. And they'll say that on a hot roll when they're getting toked. You'll notice that they'll be very clear about, get your bets in now, folks. Get your bets in while the dice are in the center. Okay, dice are out, hands high. They'll tell everybody to make sure we're all in tune with this to stay, keep our hands out of play, okay? Okay. Also, besides the hand, I was on the table last week with the Craft Nation guys and we were at Ellis Island and the guys on this end were talking to the dealer. And this dealer was, this girl was doing this arm movement, she's talking, and, and I'm shooting from straight out. It bothered me. It bothered me because I kept seeing this hand movement, and I'm trying to hit a, I'm trying to hit a landing zone, and my peripheral vision kept seeing her arms move and do all this. Well, this guy, who was a Craps Nation guy, wasn't talking to her. Probably shouldn't have said he was a Craps Nation guy, but regardless, maybe I should say it because they need to know. Keep quiet. Don't talk to the dealers. It's okay to talk to the dealers, but when they start using arm, arm movements and stuff, they might be doing it for a reason to distract the shooter, knowing that I'm going to use this conversation with you, so this guy sevens out, so I don't have to do all this work. I can just clean it up and get you guys the F out of here. Okay? Really simple. We ended up going on a couple of long rolls. Not at, not at that point, a little bit later, but we all went on some decent rolls uh, about half an hour later. We had uh, 30, followed by a 24, followed by a 20. One of the other guys, after we left, rolled a 30. So we had to get some good rolls. Anyway, if the, if the dealers are talking, you know, you see guys, I'm, I'm always saying, hey, hand, hands high. You see the guys with the hands over like this. You're shooting into them and their hands are like this. And why do their hands need to be in the, you know, the dealer should be telling them, sometimes I'll, put, I'll push the dice in the cum. And the dealer will look at me and I'll say, when, when the guy moves his hands down there, I'll shoot. And then the dealer will look down and say, sir, hands up. And he'll move it up, and then the guy would know from that point moving forward to keep him up. But I, you know, I'm, I'm nice about it. I don't have the dice in my hands where I'm shaking them the whole time. 
I'm doing this, you know, I'm, not a, I'm not a chicken feeder, but you know, I, I, I don't sit there and hold up for 10 minutes waiting for the guy. I'll push him in the center. The dealers don't like you holding the dice too long. They think you're doing something shady. So push him in the cum so the, the house knows you don't have him in your hand. And then say, sir, did you hand, can you move your hands, please? And get him up, okay? All right, next thing. Um, concerning, concerning the seven. Don't mention the word seven when the dice are out. When the puck is off and you want to say, the puck is off and it's in the don't come, you want to say three-way seven and give the dealer three dollars, you can say that. Or you can say three-way red. They know the word red is seven. You can use the word red. When I'm bending the don't side of the game, I rarely say, the, I have so, said the word seven, like, on, like because I'm hopping stuff, I'm hopping sevens. I've, I've had say I have said it during a hand. Usually it's when the puck is off. I'll say three way seven or I'll hop the six one. You know I'm hopping numbers whatever. But when that num when that thing's on a number, it's common courtesy to change from using the word seven to red. So if you just use the word red all the time, three way red, hop the red, hop the six one red, hop the five two red, like that. Okay, you can use the right verbiage and have the right mannerism at the table because there's guys putting their hard-earned money on the do side of the game. You're putting your hard-earned money on the don't side of the game. One person is betting red, one person is betting black. We're not mad at each other for being on different sides of the game. Although you'll get some players, I've been on a table before where a guy wanted to fight me because he thought I was betting against him. I said, sir, have you ever played roulette? He goes, sure. I said, you ever bet on red, you ever bet on red before? He goes, yeah. I go, well, I'm betting on black, you're betting on red. Um, have you played Baccarat? He goes, yeah. I go, you're betting on player, I'm betting on banker. There's no difference. So maybe, and then at that, he, he still was drunk, he didn't get it. He still wanted to fight me. <laughs> anyway, um, next then. So don't mention the word seven, okay? Plus, not only that, you're sitting at a table, but you're in a hot roll, person walks up and le left to, you, to your left, well, how do you win? And the guy, if the guy wants to be, pretend like he knows everything about the game, well, you see here, the number's on the six. That's the number that they're trying to shoot for the point. That's their point. That's the shooter's point. If a shooter makes a six, he wins. If he throws a seven, he loses. And he says that, and guess what the next roll is? More than, more than not, it's a seven. You know, you hear something like that, you just want to make a negative bet immediately. Call your do side game, call your do side bets off for one roll. And, and if you're paying attention to the game, maybe you have a nice solid lost number, like the 10 has gone. For 20, 30 rolls, that's a good way to throw $300 down, make $150 on the 10 and one roll of the dice, and hop the two-way, hop two reds or something, or just throw some money on a red, or hop, hop two of the sevens real quick. I'm just saying, I've done it before, when, when that's happened, can't tell you how many times it's won me money, because some knucklehead's talking about a seven during the hand, okay? So, or just tell them, shh, hey, not during, we say red on that number, please. Don't, don't say that number when the puck is out. And I'll tell them like that. I'll, I'll be nice about it, you know? Okay, cocktail waitress. A um, couple things. A, tip them, they work hard for their money. They're working for tips just like the dealer's working for tips. They all get paid minimum wage. So take care of them when they're bringing you drinks and stuff. They're carrying that heavy tray. I know a lot of cocktail waitress that have, they have, you know, carpal tunnel in their hand from carrying the tray. They have shoulder issues from holding those trays of drinks for all those years, you know, bad knees, um, take care of them with, with the, you know, you're getting, you're getting a $10 drink that you pay that in a bar for a dollar, okay? If you're winning, give them $5. <clears throat> um, cocktail waitress. So this guy's shooting the dice. He had orders a drink. The dice are down there, two shooters to his right. He orders himself a drink. And your your stick your stick left two your two is left, and you see now the dice come to him two shooters later he has a dice he's into the hand and guess who you see coming up here comes the cocktail waitress bringing the drinks grab a couple dollars okay you tell the shooter I got your drinks you focus on shooting when she comes you say I have his drinks and you give her the money and you put the drinks underneath the drink rail for him don't let him stop. His energy, don't let him stop, turn around, grab the wet beer with his right hand, 
that he's shooting the dice with, and now it's going to feel different. It's going to release. A lot of things come into play with that happens. So take it and get the drink for him. Wrap a napkin around it. Keep it dry. In case he does use his right hand, he's grabbing a dry bottle. Okay, be courteous and take care of the drink for him. It's a couple of bucks. It's not going to kill you. But it could kill the, kill the hand, and you could lose hundreds okay, of dollars be, you could have, that you, you could potentially have out there. All right. Um, where are we at here? Uh, dealer tips. Uh, make bets on hard ways for the dealers. Make bets on the pass line. There's plenty of ways you can tip the dealer. You can go field bet for the dealer. You could have a pass line with odds for yourself. You could put the dealer down. Say it's a say it's a nine. It pays three to two. You can put two units down like that and say that's the dealer. Put on top of yours. That's the dealer odds. Okay. So now the dealer is going to get three to two. If the, if the nine was to hit, they're, they're going to pay him three, and the dealer is going to take this and make he's going to make five dollars off that odds bet for him. Okay. That's why we're doing it. Um, four dollars all the hard ways for the dealers. Um, a lot of times, if I'm on the six, I get them on the hard six. Sometimes I'll do two dollars. I will do a hard six. I say you can collect that one, and we're going to parlay the other one. And I'll take them, and I'm trying. I'll try to make a hundred dollars, especially when I'm shooting. I will try to make a hundred dollars for his dollar action, and they want to collect something. They always want to collect something. So let them collect the dollar, and then parlay the other one. And the second time, um, you can go to fifteen and give him eighty-five. And now you set, you set yourself up to, to uh, for big profits, okay? One of the things I like to do, I know some guys like to give the dealers a dollar across. And I'll tell you the bad, bad with this. They give the dollars a dollar every number, just like this. The dealer, the shooter makes an eight, comes back, makes a five, makes another eight, makes a 10, makes a four. The dealer won a whole five dollars, okay? I would have done a $6 bet on the sister of the point, say the point's a, a six, I would have done a $6 bet. It's the same $6, except I'm on one number. Next roll comes out, it's a, it's um, it's an eight. This is, I told the dealer that it's my control, I give him a six now. And I put this dollar on the four or 10 that's open. Okay, for say I put it on the 10. On the four, whatever. Next hit is a, um, say it's another eight, and they pay seven more. I get them on the nine now, okay? And I'll take this two dollars and I'll put them on the, the other one that's open, and maybe the point. So I'm, I'm using that same six dollars now. At this point, we got four bets for them. We got the, we got the, uh, actually we got the nine, we got the eight, we got the six, and we have some hard ways. For him, hopefully the hard ways come for harder than four and ten because those are place bets that I have open here, and I try to get them to collect three bets, press two, collect three, press two, collect you know do something like that, whatever it's going to take, just to have some sort of rhythm to the game where you're going to try to make them you know twenty, thirty, forty, fifty dollars from a six dollar bet. Um, I was lucky enough at the Rio one time to take a free bet that I had with the dealer. It was a um, it was a uh, $25 free bet, and I had a bunch of them, and I put, I put it down on the, uh, I put two of them down on the big six and big eight, because you got, they only let you put them on certain bets, and then one of them hit. Then I took and I, I added $5, $7 to it, I got 32 across, and then I started power pressing his bets, and he got like a $1,500 tote. We had, um, we had the nine up to $750 and it hit. And you know, I went from you know from five to I dropped three, went to fifteen, full press to thirty-six, went to eighty-five, and I kept climbing up like that. I mean, there's so many nines in a row that it got to seven fifty. And he he collected one of the bigger bets like when it was at like um, when it was at uh, three sixty. I think we collected like five hundred, and and then and then I pressed my next one up to seven fifty. They collected one ten. So now they have like a a six hundred and ten dollar profit, six hundred and fourteen dollar profit, and then I threw another nine with seven fifty on it, and they hit us for a thousand fifty. You know, so all from five dollars, believe it or not. So if the hand takes off, 
The dealers are happy to make money. And trust me, when that happens, they're all like, hands are high, dice out, hands high, get your, get your bets in now. And they'll make sure no, no, late, no late bets. They don't want, they want the dice, they want that rhythm of the game going, okay? So take care of your dealers that know what they're doing. Um, they work for tips too, so get them in on bets. I like to do the single bet for $6. Uh, when I'm shooting the dice, I like to get them on the pass on top of me like this, and I say my control, in case I throw a natural, I say we're gonna stack them, don't rack them. You know, they're gonna, they'll give me like that, they'll give them a dollar, and now we'll go 10 and two. We're both, we both have the same risk. We're both stacking and we're both taking the risk. And then when I shoot, they get the point of six, we'll go like this, we'll drop it off. We can put a nickel behind the line, just like that. And now they have a flat bet, and they have odds, and you got a flat bet, and you have odds, and, you, and you're off to the races, okay? Whatever it is, just make, that's how you can talk to dealers. You can start small, you know, you don't gotta give them a lot of money. You can start small and, and you know, depends if you're winning or not. Um, the rule of thumb, in it, the rule of thumb is like 5% of your win. Um, you know, you make a thousand bucks, the dealers should get around 50 bucks. You know, 5% of a thousand is 50 bucks. So, uh, you know, $5 would be 100. Um, you got to think that if you're making a thousand dollars and you're making some bets for the dealers, you can easily get them over fifty dollars. You can see what I did with with twenty five dollars. Um, I was like, you know, but you can do the same thing with one chip. I, I did it just last week. I made this at, at the at the um, at the um, Ellis Island. I made a six dollar bet on the eight. The point was a six. The eight hit. I gave her the six. Now she took that dollar, instead of putting it in a hard way, she, she collected it, I, I let her collect it. But every time I had a hit, we, we would spread to the five, spread to the nine, and I said, until I can get you inside. And then from there, you're gonna, you're gonna press your first bet, collect your next one. So then the eight hit again, she went to 12. Eight hit again, she collected 14. Um, eventually I made the point of six, so she went to 12, then the six hit again, she collected 14. Then the five hit, she went to, you know, I dropped three dollars, went to 15. And then the five hit again, she collected 21. So all from $5, she made like $60 in totes from a $5 tip. Well, that's like me making $1,000 on the table and giving her 5%. She got, she got way more than 5%. So anyway, those are some things about table etiquette. Um, I'm trying to think if I left anything out. I'm sure I did. There's lots of things that I see every day that, that, are, that are etiquette to the game. Um, you know, when you, when you bet on the all tall small, you know, throw a deal, throw a dollar for the dealers out there. Let them see your, your control. You do, you know, minimum of a dollar. Let them put something on something. Sometimes, you know, and usually I'll go, if I go five, 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 I go one, one, one. I do, I give the dealers $18. Um, if I go in, if I go 10, 10, 10, I give the dealers two, one, two, you know, I, I give them, I give to them like that, and I, you know, I'm trying to make them money. I want their energy in on the game. That is important to me to get the dealer's energy. If they know that, hey, I can make 70 bucks off a two-one-two bet, seventy dollars for a high, seventy dollars for a, a small, a tall, and and I'm in the money for 176. If he hits all, they're rooting for. Their, trust me, underneath their breath, they are rooting for those numbers to hit. They do not want you to seven out. They're looking at it like you just gave them. A, a, so what's that, 70, that's 70 and 70 is 140, 140 and 176, about a $320 tip. You know what take, you know how hard they have to work to get a $320 tip from a, from a shooter? They probably don't make that in the, throughout the whole day. It's gonna happen on 10 rolls of the dice. It's gonna take 10 hits of these numbers for the all tall small. So trust me, their energy is in. They want you to hit it when you get close. They may not think twice about it when you first put the bet up, but trust me, when you get when you get it one number on each side away, they're rooting for you. And trust me, when I'm one number off, I'm hopping that bet for the dealers every roll of the dice. If I need an ace deuce and I need a ten, you know, I'm hopping that ace deuce. I'm hopping that ace deuce for the dealers, and I got them on a and I got them on a place bet of the ten or something. You know, I got them on something to where I want their energy focused in on that. You know, maybe I have a lay opportunity. We can talk about that in another video. How to secure a profit. That's it for now on Table Etiquette. I don't want to rant and rave. I try to make this video 12 to 15 minutes. I got a feeling I went closer to 20. Um, but anyway, folks, thanks for tuning in. 
hopefully uh, the beginners learn something here, the intermediate players learn something, and maybe some of the advanced players learn something as well. Okay, thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate you. We appreciate you. Uh, thanks for giving the like and subscribe and hitting the bell notification. And we'll talk to you soon and uh, give you some more good content. Thanks again. Peace.